come in. I need everybody. I need my jury and my final contestants. Hi, everybody. You look beautiful. Missing Keith. Oh, there he is. Okay, so it is now time to read the votes for who will be the winner of season four, The Quarantine Island. Um, I don't have a vase. I have a tiny cactus purse. So that's what I put the votes in to bring to my parents' house. Um, okay, so here we go. First vote, Tommy. That's one for Tommy. Second vote, Tommy. That's two for Tommy. Next vote, Jody. That's two for Tommy, one for Jody. Next vote, Erica. That's two for Tommy, one for Jody, one for Erica. Next vote, Jody. Two for Tommy, two for Jody, one for Erica. Tommy. Three for Tommy, two for Jody, one for Erica. Jody, we do have a tie, which means it goes to Erica to, to decide who is the winner of season four. Erica. Uh, oh, um, do I slap you? Um, is it who? Is it who I think it is? I don't know. Who do you think it is? Yeah, I guess you can slack it to me. Go ahead and slack it to me. Okay, and the winner of season four, The Quarantine Island, is Tommy. Congratulations, Tommy. You are the winner of season four. Congratulations. Wow, guys, we've never, had, we've never had a tie vote in the finale. Um, Tommy, congratulations to you. How are you feeling? I feel great, Kelsey. It means a lot. I have, this is the, I've never prepared for anything more in my life than to play this game. And I, the cast was incredible. And I don't know, I don't really have words. I'm just so thankful. I appreciate you all. Does the, does the win feel sweeter because you were chosen to be the winner of this season by your ally from day one, Erica? That does mean a lot, too. I literally linked up with Erica on day one. We Zoomed on day two, and we played this entire game together. So I'm so thankful. Um, so the people who voted for Tommy were Keith, Joey, and Katie. Okay. Keith, Keith, why did you vote for Tommy? Nope. Yep. There we go. I voted for Tommy um, just because I felt like I respected uh, his full gameplay. I feel like he won challenges. Um, I feel like he was always in the know of where the votes were going um, and was able to uh, maneuver very well. He did have a, a dominant alliance that like lasted to the end, but that's just props to like his social game uh, and game awareness as well. So that's why I voted for Tommy, just for a full game. And Joey, what about you? Yeah, no, similar reasons. It was a really tough call. I think all three of them really played great games and very different games. So it was difficult, you know, trying to figure out when hearing last night, I know we had issues at the beginning talking about distinguishing them, but last night I do think there were three very different decisions to be made about different games, but ultimately it kind of came down for me that Tommy seemed to, like he said, that he was at the center and he made that claim. I do think last night he did prove that. So that's where my vote went. And Katie, you were with Erica and Tommy from the beginning. So what made you lean towards voting for Tommy? Nope, so close, unmute. Okay, there we go. Uh, it was a very hard decision. Um, and having seen almost all of everything they did the whole season, it, that made it harder. Um, and in the end, it came down to a little bit of Tommy wanted it more longer, and it felt right. Okay. Um, so something that I think you guys spoke about in Final Banishment last night was you did three refer to yourself as the Totally Spies. Um, we just wanted to watch a quick video of from that before we go into our reunion and learn a little bit more about how Totally Spies came to be. Um, also, I am on my parents' desktop, so I really hope I can make this work. So we had a Zoom call when we first at Totally Spies, and we were <laughs> running around and doing spy noises. That needs to go in the highlight reel, please, because nobody knew about this alliance. Nobody knew. No one. Hello, my name is Katie. I'm 
my spies. <laughs> my, my, you think it's lip balm? It's actually lasers. I'm having the network. Are we the villains? No, we're spies. Why are we so cute? I just feel like I went to bed last night. I was just like happy about this, like just talking about spies with you guys for so long. <laughs> we're playing incredible games. Did it? Spies, oh. y'all. We're spies. Oh, you cutie. So, Jody, how did you manage to infiltrate yourself with the Totally Spies, seeing as how Tommy and Erica were with Katie on the Flamingos from the beginning, and you were able to move into that third position? Yeah, so before we even broke up into teams, I tried to talk to as many people as possible, and I did find supernatural connections with Erica. We're both from New England. Tommy and I both, like, I know people in Chicago and that whole scene, so, like, like when I got back to Royals uh, for the first time, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I see a little majority here and I already feel good with two people. And like the conversation was so natural going back into it that I was like, yes, I was so stoked. I had some people to work with. So, and it all, it's history from there. So Tommy and Erica, what made you guys decide to trust Jody? Did it feel also to you guys like kismet from the beginning? Um, I was scared at first because one of the first conversations I had with Jody um, was him saying, hey, I chose you for the Zoom call that first day, but you didn't choose me back. <laughs> and so um, after the team swap happened, I was kind of scared because I was like, oh man, like, you know, that first day I talked about working with Jody, but, you know, in the end, I didn't pick him in the daisy chain and then on top of, you know, not picking him for the Zoom call, I was just like, oh man, like, there's so many reasons for him to be pissed at me. Um, so at first I was like, all right, like let's dip our toes back into the water and see how Jody's feeling. But um, he opened up to us um, in a very natural way. And I think um, our sense of humor is just lined up so well that it became really easy to talk to him, even though I had a lot of anxieties talking to him at first. Um, okay, so before I ask, we had a lot of questions for jury. What informed your votes? Um, what informed your questions last night? Um, but before we get into that, I want to bring on the rest of our Vanish players from season four. Season four, please turn on your cameras. Welcome. Hi. Um, I'm going to start with, hi, Chris. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Jesse, how's it going? Are you standing up? Uh, no, no, but I did just put on a suit 30 seconds ago when I saw that Joey and Tommy and uh, even Jody has the, the bow tie. Okay, great. We love, we love a quick change. Hi, Vic. Hi, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, hi, so hello. Yeah, so happy to see you. I'm back. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, Tommy didn't win. This is, Vic is coming back from Exile Island. They battled back. And I found an idol, and I am planning tonight to give it to Becca. So, Becca, congratulations, you are saved from this vote. Um, Molly, hi. Hello, great to see you, Kelsey. Great lip. Oh, thank you. I'm excited to talk to you about being the first player sent home, but having a very large effect on the entire season and game. I did? I think so. Um, Elisa, you look gorgeous. Thank you. How you doing? I'm really good, you know, I have my people, my people behind me. You, uh, your lightsaber is a people? Yes, I count it as a person. Okay, great. I also have my notes backwards, but it says, I love Kelsey, Carter, oh. Marissa, the season forecast. I know it's backwards, so. Very cute. Um, hello, Shannon. Hi, Kelsey. Did you hold a six minute plank before joining us tonight? I, I did not. Um, stopped at five minutes, thought like that's, that's probably fine. <laughs> Got Lower it. my threat level for the reunion, you know? Lower your threat level for the reunion, love it, same page. And hi, Paul Queen. Hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm fabulous. I, this is, I dressed up. Yes, you did dress up. I recognize that as dressing up. Fabulous. 100%. Um, so I am going to ask our jury some questions before I get into some broader stuff. Um, the main question that came through was, Nicholas, did you actually vote based off rocks last night or was that just part of the show? 
That was absolutely part of the show. I respect the game way too much to actually do that. Um, I think I just wanted to like hammer the point to the the three finalists. Like I needed to know why your games were different. Otherwise, that is what I was gonna do. Like if I really felt like they none of them performed, um, I probably would have went with it. Ironically, jo uh, Jody did pick The Rock, and that was where my vote went. Um, it just happened. That was just happenstance. So and. You were one of the only non-former buns to vote for Jody. Did you, mm -hmm. I have to ask the question, Nicholas, we are gonna get into it, and Jury, you're gonna hear me push back on you guys tonight. Did you not vote for Erica and Tommy because you were bitter for them making it to the end and how they played? No, no, um, not at all. Uh, I think that uh, by the end of it, I did like see like what they were able to bring to the game, what they did in order to get to the end. I just like was a fan more of Jody's game because I thought it was a little more dynamic. He played from the bottom. He, he was able to get in with Scott and Colleen and Joanna and Katie, Tommy and Erica, like in both of those situations. And he used information he got from people to save his alliances and he backstabbed Scott, he backstabbed uh, uh, Micah right at the right times. So I just, I was a fan of that game. So Jody, were you surprised at all to see that you tied with Tommy? I wasn't, like I forgot there were seven votes and that could mean there could potentially be a tie. <laughs> but I mean, that's, I think that's the only like number equation it could go that way too. So it's like, it's, it makes this experience just that much cooler for me. Like I was at peace with how I played before we even got to this afternoon. But like knowing that it was that close, like it reminds me of like an unknown CBS show, Ghost Island season, where they had their first um, tie vote at the end. And I was like, wow, both those guys played such a great game. It would be so hard as a jury. So I am totally feeling good and I'm at peace with everything. Um, Micah, you were actually the lone vote for Erica. What compelled you to vote for Erica? Um, so it was actually a very last minute decision. I didn't think that I'd be the one to vote first, um, but that was just where my heart was going at the moment and I stand by it. Absolutely. I think she was a very strong player and I, I think they all deserve to win, but that's still who I vote for today. And that's who I would work with if this started all over again. So, so a main question that fans had as well, um, by show of hands for the jury, how many, how many of you changed who you were going to vote for during the course of banishment or banishment convinced you to vote elsewhere? Joey, Micah, and Joanna. Okay, so the rest of you kind of came in with already deciding who you wanted to vote for. Okay. Um, well, let me cross that out. Okay, so Scott, one of the questions that was asked was, you know, you were one of the people who, okay, I'm gonna say this as a whole, jury seemed a little bit bitter last night and they also seemed angry that the contestants had played a predictable game. However, um, Scott, I wanna ask, what big moves do you wish that you would have seen from them that wouldn't have been predictable? I mean, I, uh... Um, I don't think we were angry or bitter. I think we were trying to be intimidating, but I think there were real questions like, please point to specific things that you did and like original ideas that you had just so we can distinguish between people. And I wasn't really, I don't need somebody to make a huge dramatic move, but I wanted to see like, was there a challenge you thought was really crucial? And that's the thing you're putting your strategy on or just like, something to give me something that's more tangible than you just coasted to the end. And I think they, they answered it well, and it was helpful to see, like, this is what they prioritized. So Joanna, before, when you were voted off, you did allude to like, Erica's running this game, she's at the center of this game, and yet you did not vote for Erica. Was, was you saying that just trying to shake things up before you left the game? Yes. However, um, I still went into it thinking that she was, and I wasn't lying, she was and is a strong woman. And she um, was controlling a lot of elements of this game. Um, however, this, likewise, I just didn't see too much that would distinguish her game from Tommy's game. And in the beginning question that Micah asked, 
when it was who would you choose to win and why, um, I noticed that Tommy and Erica did not hesitate in answering the question for both of them, but they did hesitate and almost insinuate that Jody didn't play as good as a game that I think he did. He did a lot of moves I didn't even know about. Um, and he was flying way under the radar and he infiltrated a lot of alliances and he lied and uh, he did a lot of really cool things in this game. And so I thought that he should win because that's what it is. That's the nature of the game, right? Yes. So one thing I do want to call attention to, absolutely all three of you deserve to be final contestants. You know, I told you like going into it, be proud of your game, be proud of what you've done. I would love to acknowledge that Erica never had a single idol or advantage the entire game and her name was never written down once. I think that's incredibly impressive and deserves to be recognized. Um, so I don't have a hat on Erica, but hats off to you on that guy. Um, yes. Okay. So another great question came about regarding like the flamingos. So Nicholas, Joey, Micah, people were wondering if, if the numbers had worked in your favor, would you three not have been, would it have just been a flip and you would have been fine, the three of you there together in the end, or would you have flipped on each other so that you were not just going against Royals? Because I think some fans were arguing that like, you're upset that the three flamingos are staying true to each other, but were you three not also doing the same thing? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I know that Joey had a really good social game going, so I think there could have been an opportunity that I would have maybe been worried about sitting next to Joey at the end because playing with him and them having such a good social game, that, that was a big threat. So. I could have seen myself voting for you, Joey. Love you, Joey. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I don't take it personally at all. I thought that I was going to say, yeah, something similar, because I think that it was, I, I could easily see myself being in a similar situation. That's why I can't, like, you know, although predictable was, like, thrown out there, I can't necessarily say that it was, like, not something that I would have done myself. But Nicholas definitely would have been my target, too, because I knew he would have been the one coming for me more so than if, like Micah, Chris, or Shannon were in that situation. I was like, I know, I, I mean, no one's surprised. We know it would be Nicholas. Like, we know it was coming for me. Um, Micah, what about you? Yeah, so just to echo off what Joey said, I would probably have flipped on Nicholas too. Um, mostly because he was, I felt like he took a lot of lead and was um, making a lot of the, the decisions at a certain point. And so I would have been like, okay, we got to get ahead of this guy before he flips on us. <laughs> Okay, uh, Nicholas, you would have been booted, um, but you were booted. Okay, so Joey, people were curious because there was again talk with the jury of like big moves, big moves, shake things up. Do you wish that in retrospect you had told Nicholas or Micah about your idols so that you three might have more effectively been able to use it and make a big game move? Ultimately, no, because I think, you know, I, I, I do regret it. I never lied to them, so like the, the night, the morning after the idol came out, or the, the challenge, the dance challenge came out, then the next morning we were all talking if we got the idol. And at that point, I hadn't been notified that I like had gotten it yet. So at that point, I did say to them, they were, I was really upset. I said, I really tried. I sent this in really early. I think I, I'm surprised I didn't get this. And they were both like upset. And then later on, I found it. And I was just kind of like, I would have rather not tell them I have the idol. And then like, we all say our goodbyes and think one of us is going home. So only I had to do the acting. Like the two of them could actually be genuinely sad. And then I could always surprise them ultimately with what happened. And I think ultimately like we found out, you know, just it just takes one person to let someone know. So like, you know, I know like Nicholas was talking to Tommy and like Micah had said something to Jody about like going into that banishment anyway. So just if, if one person had just let it slip that I had an idol, like that could have been, you know, me going a lot earlier than I ended up going. Yes. Um, now that was personally one of my favorite clues that we have dropped in all four seasons. Um, of course, we made a compilation video of all of you dancing. Tommy famously uh, sent me 12 videos, 12 videos. So we're going to watch a real quick and cute little compilation of y'all dancing.
hate myself. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I've watched it like 13 times. Thank you to Corey who edited that together. Um, Tommy, at what point did you realize that you needed to sing the words? The next morning. Okay. That was the word. That was probably the lowest point in the game for me. Like, I'm, I sound dramatic, but I was so upset after that because I was like, if I can't get this idol, what idol can I get? And it was, it was miserable. I was so sad. Um, it was truly incredible to get all of those dancing videos. So, so fun. So great. Um, okay, so now I want to go into some more general wider questions. Um, I want to begin with Molly. So Molly, there's been, you've had a lasting impact. This, oh, she looks frozen. Molly, are you frozen? Yeah, Molly, you're frozen. Wait, you're back. That's, that's mean, she has the heart, all right? She's not <laughs> Can you hear me, Molly? Yeah, sorry, my, my internet crapped out. No worries. Sorry. Um, so you were one of the first players that went home, um, and yet you have this very lasting impact huge, um, which also you could argue Jody leaned into from the second that banishment happened. Did you know you were going home that night? Uh, it's a, it's a really, it's a really good question. I would say I, uh, I had a, I had a little bit of a feeling, um, just because of like the, um, unclear answers I was getting from people during the day. Had you been on another team, do you think you would have been the first to go home? I, I don't think I would have been the first to go home. Okay, and had you, was this exit speech spur of the moment? Um, so I, I, I thought of it uh, in the, I thought of it in the shower before because I'm like, I'm just not, I'm not feeling great. So I would like to speak to the things that are um, on my heart <laughs> right now. And so I, I said a, a couple things and um, I, I'd be happy to elaborate if you'd like me to. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, where did the comment come from? Sure, sure. So I think that um, on Daisy Chain Day, like in the middle of the day, I got a message uh, that said, um, so who do we, from Scott, that said, who do we want to pick for our dream team? And uh, so he was like inviting me to be part of the construction of this team. And so I'm like, I mentioned Joey, I mentioned Erica. Um, and like the smartest order where we could get like this, this interesting team. And then uh, I suppose in the afternoon, he made other connections. Um, and I think like part of, part of me um, mentioning like, oh, we could do it this way, we could do it this way. He eventually conveyed to the rest of the buns, this is just what I picked up from confessionals, that I was trying to control his captainship. But I thought it was like a, it was, the words were like, let's, let's do this together. Um, and so I, I would, was feeling a little bit frustrated because I felt like the Scott, Colleen, Joanna were a little bit of a pack. And like, just like Jody said last night, you had to like get onto that pack if you wanted to make it through. And, you know, I, the buns were correct in saying that I was eager. I was still playing at like the daisy chain pace. I was playing at like a Nicholas seven when <laughs> the, the speed of the buns were a little bit uh, slower than that. And so I think in those early days, I was just getting a vibe. I was getting a, a feeling from Scott because Scott is so smart and he's so good at all of these challenges. And I just wasn't understanding why he wouldn't um, be clear with me. And I was never against him. Uh, so it was just, it was frustrating. And that's, that's why it, that's why the, the comment came about. And uh, I, I just want to say that, um, after I was voted out and I was unblocked from the QI Instagram, uh, I watched some of the confessionals. This is prior to me seeing them and I called, I said the weasel thing and they were like not nice. Uh, and a friend told me to like not watch one of them because it would have upset me. And then I ended up watching it yesterday, like two or three weeks later. And it's really hard. It's, it's after three days, Scott calling me insufferable and messy um, and, you know, ended the confessional with going, Puh. And I'm like, oh my, oh my. And my, my confessionals were starkly different. So to, to sum all of this up, the, the weasel comment carried through the game. And I, but I do think that agnostic of my comment, other people could get similar vibes. Um, and so I do stand by the statement while simultaneously understanding that Scott is like in his real life, a very, very good person who works to elevate and celebrate and support people from marginalized communities. And I think in real life, Scott is like a quality person that I would absolutely get along with. And I think I was just really crushed to get the first boot. That's my piece. 
Scott, do you have any sort of response? I mean, there is something very interesting with this game in general of, you know, things that you're saying publicly in front of everyone and things that you're revealing in a confessional when people aren't able to respond. Um, yeah, I mean, to address the, that like first day confessional, I was trying to like, well, we're on a reality show, like, let me be funny. And I immediately like the next day apologized in my confessional for doing that because it's just not my character. I do think, I don't necessarily buy that Molly genuinely wanted to work with me based on other information that I've heard. Um, so I think that's a little bit of damage control because the things that I was picking up on are the same things that everybody else was picking up on about Molly's eagerness and like badgering and all this stuff. So um, yeah, from that point on, I was like, I don't want to be in this like gross, mean spirited game. And so I just lightened up and treated it more as a game from that point on. Um, and the weasel thing I thought was really funny uh, from then on out. So it didn't bother me. Um, so Molly, something that was very interesting that obviously the jury did not know is, you know, you and Jody had connected, you were going to work together, he flipped on you, and then in your confessional, you were like, I forgive Jody, I'm not even mad at him. Um, what made you feel just not upset with him? I think everyone in this game that has talked to Jody, like, Jody's so great to talk to. He's, he's, he's so easy to talk to. I mean, I, we were just chit-chatting the whole day. Everything that like Scott had said to me, Joanna, Colleen, I fed that to Jody. I mean, I was under, I was under Jody's spell. Um, but I just like, I just, he, he just kept talking to me, which made me feel comfortable. And it made me like also feel seen as a, as a person. Um, and so, yeah, I think I, I wanted to work with Jody. I think I, I, I didn't want to work with Scott, but I think I needed to. So that's why I was like, I got to just cozy up with him in this pack um, for a couple days. Um, but yeah, it just came off his way too thirsty. But to answer the Jody question, and I, I think I saw the same thing happen with Shannon, the same thing happened with Micah. It's like, he's just so pleasant. And I can't wait for you all to see his confessionals because you're going to like him even more. Um, yes, Jody's confessionals are very funny, very charming. Um, we got a lot of responses to them. I don't have a compilation video for it. I'm sorry. You'll just have to check it out yourself. Um, okay, so next I want to go to Jesse. So Jesse, something that you and I spoke about in, in our QI goodbye, which obviously any jury or final contestants haven't gotten to see, is you thought that this game was going to be a trivia-based game. I knew there was going to be some social aspect, certainly. I mean, it wasn't like Jeopardy. It was not like Jeopardy. Did you think it was going to be like Jeopardy? What is yes? <laughs> okay, so Jesse, something that I do want to talk about, which I found really, really interesting, was in the beginning, I think that people didn't fully understand your style of communication, right? Like you were reaching out to people, trying to connect with them, um, sending articles and things like that. But then by the time you left, it really seems like you had connected with your team. You had learned information about them. Um, did you feel like on that first day that you were having any sort of difficulty connecting with people or navigating how to do that? A bit. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. I, this was, this was maybe the moment when I realized I was not going to win this game. So from 7.57 to 8 p.m. each night, all the contestants are on the Zoom for like three minutes before Kelsey actually starts the game and, and presses record. And we're all making small talk. And I would see that you were all talking about the new episode of, uh, you know, Big Brother or, or Top Chef or something. And that was how a lot of you were, were connecting. And I don't particularly watch either of those two shows. So I said, oh, let me try to make a connection based on television that I'm watching. So I know that Katie was from Toronto. So I said, oh man, the Toronto Raptors, have you been watching them in the playoffs? I mean, they're doing amazing. I think they could go all the way. And Katie responded, oh, the Raptors are in the playoffs? <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel that Jesse, you were a misunderstood but thoroughly charming contestant. And yes, Katie, you want to say something? I can tell. I just want to clarify that, like immediately after that, we bonded over crosswords. So like, it was fine. 
Um, Jesse, people also wanted to know, would you be recommending this to anyone in your life now that you know what the game actually is? Yeah, yeah, some people, some people certainly. <laughs> um, yeah, some, uh, yeah, I, I, have, I have friends who would, who would be great at this. Um, and then we also had a request if you can host a TQI trivia night, so we will circle back on that, but I think people would very much love if you would leave that. Um, okay, so next I'm gonna go to Vic. Hi, Vic, hi, hi again. Hello. Hi, we're so, thank you for joining us tonight. We genuinely very appreciate it. Um, I know Thanks you- Thanks for having me. I know you left the game early, but we were all very sad to see you go. It really felt like you were going to have a long career in this game. Um, we're be gone immediately. It really could have gone either way. Honestly, I, it could have, it very easily could have gone either way. So I feel good about it though. Okay. Um, people wanted to know, because it seemed like you, you know, you still followed it a bit. Are you surprised by who made the final three? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. I either thought it was going to be some like real fireworks players that were going to make the top three or it was going to be uh, three people that like kind of like seemed to have played the middle on the outside, but it was very cool getting to go back and listen to the confessionals and sort of see how like what the inner workings that people were doing. So I mean like I I'm thrilled with the final three as it as it ended up and I I mean they're all great. So an interesting fact that Nicholas revealed last night is that you, you, both of you know each other from previously from this game. Had Correct. You Hello, Nicholas. With, had you shared that with any other contestants when you started uh, the game? I had not. <laughs> Nicholas, I, have you share? Uh, no. Uh, well, yeah, actually, after Chris left, um, I told Joey and Micah that I knew that Chris and Tommy had a connection. And then at that point, I was like, it doesn't really matter. I'll reveal that I knew Vic, too. Um, okay. Yeah, and that's when I shared it. And they were the only ones who knew that, I think. So Vic, would you have kept that information secret for as long as possible? I would not have told anybody. I don't think. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. If Vic but... stayed in the game, I wouldn't have either. Like, that would have been silent. Okay. I just think more than anything, it, it immediately, I think, makes you s seem sneaky, I guess, even if there's nothing sneaky about it. Like, I didn't know Nicholas super well. We knew each other. Like, we we knew each other kind of like through a mutual friend was our, is our big connection. But I don't know. I think it, just more than anything, it immediately paints you as like you're hiding something, yes. I think. Also, I would like as a broad disclaimer, like to say we try so hard to cast strangers. It was actually very funny to find out that there was any sort of connection because we just, you know, we have like dozens of people who apply. We really were like, oh, great. All strangers. Didn't work out. <laughs> um, Elisa. Hello again, Elisa. Hi. Um, of course, we all want to know how the knee is. Oh, the knee is great. The knee is really good. My um, physical therapist actually thinks that me doing the wall sit for so long actually helped stretch out my knee, which I don't personally don't believe, but <laughs> um, yeah, pretty good. And um, sincerely, how did it feel kind of transitioning from being in the game to then being able to watch as a fan again? Well, I, I went into the game really just wanting to make friends and also do the challenges from watching the past two seasons. I was very prepared for any of the games that we were doing. Um, as any of the confessionals people saw my crazy algorithms for all of the puzzles. Um, but transitioning from playing back to being in the chat and being able to watch was so nice. Um, because I just love being able to commentate on everything and being able to be like, yeah, go you and go you. Um, obviously, I was really sad that I wasn't playing anymore because the challenges would come up and I'd be like, oh, I know how to do that. Or, oh, I could really do that well. But um, it, was, it was nice to take a break and not be, you know, stressing all the time, worrying about if people like me or not, and crying all the time. I haven't cried since we've played, other than like watching sad videos on like Instagram or stuff like that. So I've, I've, it's been a, it's been a nice transition and I get to be friends with all these people now. So like with or without the game, it's nice. Um, 
Also, I just realized, hey, producers, can one of you email me uh, Elisa's audition video when you get a second? Because Elisa's audition video was literally 30 seconds, and it's one of the best things I've ever seen. So if I get that in time, we'll gladly download and show it to you all. Um, okay, Shannon, uh, uh, so fascinating. You won that first advantage, and you told your team, and everyone was like, how is she going to get out of this? would love to be walked through the thought process from getting it, finding it, and then deciding to let them know parts of the information. Yeah, okay. This is gonna be fun to reveal to the Royals. <laughs> um, I solved the clue in like five minutes after it came out or something. And then after I had it, I had to go to this work lunch. That part of the story was real, you guys. So I go to this work lunch and I'm not paying attention anymore. And then Micah posts in the group Slack, like, hey, you guys, there's this clue, like we should all work on it together and try to solve it. And so everyone's like doing math in the general Slack. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so bad. Like I, a, I already have it. B, like, um, I'm... I thought that they were all going to figure out eventually that somebody had it because they were going to start guessing answers and they were going to be wrong. And I thought they might pin it on me because I was like not participating in this group solve because I was at this lunch. And on top of that, I'm a very bad liar. I panic under stress. And so I was just like, what if I just told them? <laughs> so I tried to act like I had solved it with them. So I was like, guys, I got it. Yay, we all got it. <laughs> and uh, at first I was like, that could have been really bad, but it actually ended up being a good thing, I think, because I think it really- It seemed like a bonder for sure. It really did seem like that. It did, and I really was genuine in like, I want to use this to help us, the Royals, at a swap or at a merge or something. Um, that was genuine. I just like, had Micah not done the group solve thing, I probably would not have told everyone. <laughs> but, um, but it really did seem to bond you guys, especially notably Joey went to Exile Island, won a long distance Zoom token, and then used it to check in with you, which really seems like, you know, the OG Royals had connected and bonded to each other. So on the flip side, Jody, it seems like no one thought you had it and everyone thought Scott had it. Yeah, <laughs> I was coming back from Dunkin' Donuts. Like I go with my brother quite frequently and I'm like, oh crap, there's like something in like Bun's water well or whatever. And like, it was that video. And so I'm playing it in the car and then I'm like doing the math, like on the calculator, just like switching back and forth from the app. And at this point I already told the buns, I was like, you guys, if there's like a math challenge, I suck, please don't make me do it. And then we get like a, a huge equation. I, it feels like I'm taking the SAT. So I'm like, uh, but I actually got it within like the first couple minutes, like before I even sit my iced coffee. And yeah, so I was like, oh, I'm just gonna keep this with me like for as long as I can. And unfortunately, like I've made such a great bond with Shannon on such like a personal level. And we could talk about like the entertainment industry and just the Amanda show and cheese its um, Like she did unfortunately tell me about her, her um, you know, advantage. And I was like, oh, I want an upgrade. Like this extra vote, like it's not good. And it's not good if the extra vote gets to the merge and she would, and I think she'd probably go back to the Royals. Like who wouldn't? Did anyone ever figure out that it was Jody who had it instead of Scott? Just by raise of hands, Joey and, well, Scott, yes. Nicholas a little bit, Micah a little bit. Yeah, it seems like you really kept that hidden. As far as Katie, who had the third one, it really did feel like Nicholas had figured out that you had it when he brought a, that information up at Banishment. Did you feel then, Katie, that everyone might know that you had this? I mean, I wasn't concerned about that, I guess. <laughs> Um, you know, and like, I had told, you know, Tommy and Erica, I told Keith, and like, Keith said he didn't tell anyone, but then I heard that he did tell someone, it's like, who knows, you know, like, whatever, at that point, 
if people know, they know. And like, I wasn't super bothered about it. And uh, I didn't have to use it, so. You, yes, also, that's what I, yeah, that's what I was gonna say too, I was saying. like. <laughs> she, she never used the advantage the entire time. Could have used it at final five, chose not to use it, pretty badass move. Um, before I go to Colleen and Chris, we have questions from my Found the Elisa video. And guys, we just, we gotta watch this. So what you need to know is the first person you see in this video is her sister, Ashley, who played season two. As long as we all know that, then we're gonna enjoy this ride. Oh no. Hi, my name's Ashley, and I'm applying for season four of the Quarantine Island. Your time is up, my time is now, now. You can't see me, my time is now, now. It's the franchise. It's my turn now. Hi, my name is Lisa Cook. I graduated during the pandemic. No, I did not have a graduation ceremony, but it's fine. I also don't have a job because of it, so all I do is watch Survivor Quarantine every single day. <laughs> that was truly it! That's all she submitted! And we were like, we must cast, we must cast. Alisa, brilliant job with your audition video. Thank you. Truly incredible. Um, Ashley wants me to point out, written and directed by Elisa. We're not going to give Ashley any credit for that. Um, so phenomenal. Okay, so... The, the, em the Emmy Awards are tonight. There's still time. Yes, we can submit this. Thank you, Jesse. Um, so Colleen, we gotta, we gotta talk about... I, I saved you and Chris because we gotta talk about the legendary idol move right? Like a huge, huge move. Um, and you are also someone who came into this game not entirely knowing what it would be, right? That's very generous of you, Kelsey. I came into this game not knowing how to work the internet, more or less play a game. And you did phenomenally. You really did. So um, also, the the funniest part of the whole idol situation which i do want to well actually let me ask scott first so scott did you give that to colleen with the anticipation of a swap is coming yes okay yeah so that if you were split up she could protect herself yeah okay um now the funny thing i was going to say is that colleen famously texted becca to be like how do you use this thing what does it do didn't know how to use it before <laughs> yes chris colleen? Colleen and I were talking about an idol that day. She was like, I haven't watched the show in so long, which is true. And true. I was like, yeah, well, you can like use it for yourself or for someone else. Like I was so, so, so convinced that she did not have an idol. That's why after that, I was like, yes. she is so good. Because yeah, I was like, oh yeah, you can do this with it and that and everything. And then it <laughs> got me right away. You walked her through how to do that. Um, now, actually- sure did. So, Chris, you know, often in this sort of game, we always, like, hail, like, oh, my God, an idol move, but we never really get to hear from the other side of the person who is idled out. Were you surprised to see that it was your name and not someone else's? Because it did seem like you and Colleen had started forming a connection. I, I do. I think once I saw the idol, I was, like, ready for it to be me. And even in that banishment, I said, if it's not this person, it's going to be me. Like... I just knew I wasn't going to be like in the outskirts of a loop. I was either going to know or not. So I think, and then like reflecting on it, I get it. I totally get it. I think I've listened to like some of what was saying. I do think Micah and Nicholas had a stronger connection with Keith. I also like knew that, but you know, was, was like aware of like kind of uh, relationships that were going on. I fully didn't think there was an idol. So it was just like, I thought those, we knew about the advantage from Shannon. And I was like, there's three advantages. They're not going to throw another idol in here. That would be crazy. And then sure enough, there I was. Well, um, and also this was the famous clue number two that everyone was always like, what is clue number two? I stupidly did label clue number three and just never forgot about it. But yes, all the producers had uh, our profile photos with hidden hieroglyphics. Scott figured out the hieroglyphics, added it up and got it. No one else even attempted, not attempted, but realized to even figure it out. Um, okay, but back to the Chris Colleen thing. One of the coolest parts, and I want to go to you, Keith, was actually, I think that day, wasn't it going to be Joanna and you fully flipped all the OG Royals to go towards Colleen? 
Oh gosh, that day. Um, so like coming in, I was like, okay, I shouldn't be a target. I'm the only flamingo. Um, and like, I, uh, just because like, okay, Joanna, like we represent something that is not um, prevalent in these games. I was like, I would like her not to go, but also strategy wise, I'm, I'm hearing from Colleen, like, okay, her and Chris are pretty tight. So strategy wise, it would not help to get rid of Joanna next. Cause then Chris, who I'm thinking is like leading stuff. Okay. If we go to banishment again, which we're likely to, uh, I would be next. So I connected with Nicholas and Micah pretty like, I, especially Micah, I was like, Hey, we were all like, last picks essentially on the daisy chain so let's do something i used my zoom coin on micah and i knew i wasn't going to be able to convince chris to like not do colleen so i was like, okay let's go through his allies let's see if i can convince them to try to convince uh him to do colleen instead of joanna and the um, language that you used with micah i feel is very important to note where i think micah was talking about like oh, they want to do this. And you said, oh, is, is Chris the one who makes the decisions for you guys? <laughs> and really just saw the wheels turning for Mike as you said that. No, I it was, I think, I think for me, that was like a huge call on Keith's part. And like Micah and Nicholas and I were in the loop with each other. I did know that Micah and Keith had a call. I knew that like he was playing this kind of like you're on the lower part of it but I also knew my relationship with Micah and Nicholas so like I thought you know he's aware of it but like I can play it too so he called it I mean he got it right it, it worked out perfectly for him I think it was great it was a great call and Keith you is it correct that you just messaged who did you right before you knew Colleen had the idol she let you know right before that banishment okay so I told people like five minutes before like we were talking about it like a good 20 minutes before and she was like, I have something. I, I, I had, we hadn't really talked like through the middle portion of that day. So in my head, back in my head, I was like, okay, she could, but does she also want it to be a tie? So I said, okay, worst case scenario is true. Let's go big. Let's go with the only person who I like in, in game. I love Chris. In game wise, I didn't have a strong game connection with let's go Chris. So I can still have Nicholas and Micah and, um, Joanna and Colleen to, to fall back on as well. Um, but yeah, I, I knew beforehand. And then I tried to follow up post banishment. I was like, oh, she told me five minutes before. Like, I had no clue it was true. Sorry, I didn't tell you guys, but I knew they told me that. <laughs> um, also, one of the more legendary Zoom calls took place right after that banishment, which Nicholas engineered, which Nicholas would really genuinely love to know why you thought that was a good idea of essentially saying to Colleen, how dare you use an idol? We were voting for you. <laughs> so, okay. That was like 50-50 strategy, emotional response. Um, what that really was, I, no fault to Colleen. Of course you're going to play an idol to save yourself. But obviously we all knew if a royal did go, we were going from a 3-3 back into a 3-3 again. So part of what I was thinking with strategy was like throw some chaos in this and make them all have anxiety at the highest level and maybe you can capitalize on it. Because ironically, it wasn't Joanna and Colleen I didn't trust in that moment, it was Keith. Because I thought he was playing us the whole time. And I needed to find out maybe someone would slip up and say something, but through that Zoom call and the conversations after I started to realize, okay, it was a semi last minute thing and there was maybe some distrust. And then the following day, it was like Colleen was saying Keith's name and I let Keith know and then boom, it was done. Like they weren't gonna work together. Can I speak to that? Can I follow up with that? I would love for you to do I was that. so scared going into that Zoom call. I was, like, <laughs> Micah, I was like, Micah, what is about to happen right now? And I had full intentions of just like staying quiet, hoping nobody like revealed anything that was gonna risk me. So I, 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 I had a suspicion <laughs> that you were suspicious, Nicholas. I'm just glad it didn't bite me in the behind. Well, uh, I, I didn't ask you anything. I was like, but I was watching you like a, like a fucking hawk. <laughs> Um, it was also, I have to say, okay, so Nick, you created a lot of chaos 
in banishment ceremonies, you really wanted to stir the pot. But mm -hmm. something that I don't think everyone realized is that Joey was really the little devil on your shoulder, giving you things that you should say at banishment and gassing you up. <laughs> Joey, what was the sort of stuff you were doing to get Nicholas ready for banishment? So like after so that call, going into that call, I just get on to the new Buns channel. And Nicholas and Mike and I had a thread, the three of us, and Nicholas said, I'm going to get them on a call. And Micah said, yeah, do it, do it. And I, and I just kept, and then Nicholas messaged all six of us and said, let's have a call. And everyone said, we're all free, we're all free. So then the producer said, like, at Joey, like, where are you? Like, are you available? And so then I'm messaging Nicholas the whole time, like, please don't do this. This is going to be so awkward. They're going to, like, think the three of us are tight. And then I realized, like, what Micah did was great. Like, when you unleash Nicholas, like, it's, like, so great. He calls truth out when it's necessary. Like, it's it just, it, br it brings a lot of fun to the game. It, like, calls things out. It lets, like, nothing be in the shadows. So, like, before banishment, sometimes I'd wake up in the morning, like on a banishment day and text Nicholas and Micah and say, like, what are stuff we should talk about at banishment? <laughs> Knowing Micah and I were never going to talk about these things. <laughs> Being like, should we bring up the advantage? Should we bring up like that? Should we bring up like who we think has the advantage? Should we like say that we know that Tommy and Chris know each other and that like Tom, like they shouldn't trust Tommy and like the less Tommy like said this stuff. What should we talk about? And Nicholas would just sometimes would be like, that's a great idea. And Nicholas like, I have no problem talking about it. And we'd be like, let's go for it. Uh, quite the dynamic duo, really just setting Nicholas up for the banishments, which is so funny. Um, okay, so we want to break down, um, Keith actually requested we break down that double banishment, which was wild, that went to rocks the first time. So for that one, it was four, four Scott, four Keith, and two for Nicholas. Who were the people that voted for Nicholas in that banishment? Erica and Scott. So Erica, how come you, had you guys talked about splitting the vote? And is that why you and Scott went Nicholas in case Keith or Keith had an idol? Um, wait, hold on, I'm trying to, yeah, it was, yeah, I, I voted, um, wait, I thought it was a split vote. Hold on, my memory is kind of bad right now. Okay, I'm going to go to Scott. Scott, did you vote for Nicholas with because of the banishment dynamics we'd had between you and Nicholas, or was it because you guys were trying to split the votes? Uh, it was a plan of originally Tommy's, I think, to split the votes and try to flush something. Um, and I knew pretty clearly that I was the one who was going to bear the risk of it because I knew I was a big target. Um, but yeah, we wanted to like show solidarity with everyone, split the votes anyway. Um, and then it got complicated from there. It did. And Tommy, I want to go to you because the interesting part of that is after we went to the tie, we were going to the revote. Nicholas really was like, let's talk about it. Let's make sure we don't have to go to rocks and everything like that. And you were not wanting to discuss, assuming that it was going to be four versus three, even though I pointed out and he pointed out there were actually 10 votes. There was an extra vote at play. Did you even register and hear that? Or were you just like, no, okay. Yeah, I let's stick to the plan. I yeah, because I was immune that night anyway. So my mind was already like, I was not thinking in the in the mindset that I was at risk. And so my I my mind was not as clear as the like what could have happened as everyone else's. So I was just like, come on, guys, what the heck? There's only seven of us. And then I forgot that like, okay, this is feedback, but it's not gonna be great feedback. I forgot that like a double vote could be used again. Because that's a fourth vote and not a double vote, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, an extra vote extends to a revote. I know that last season before. as well. <laughs> I also voted for Nicholas. I just remembered. It's hard to remember all these things, but I also and then voted. you flip to voting for Scott uh, in the revote. Okay, and then we went to we went to rocks, and which was no wait, Jody, what's that face? Oh yeah, I was just thinking, I was just remembering rocks and how set, that was like the most petrifying experience in this game. Like, I didn't think that would be an option, just like Tommy with the numbers. Like, I was like, oh, of course it's a tie somehow. Someone flipped or someone did this. But it was like, no, there was actually this extra advantage, which I was assuming was from Carter, like that video of Tommy Vignades. Yes. Um, so I was like... Oh, sorry, go ahead. And 
Nicholas got that, not Joey, because I know you both got Nicholas video. and Joey got it together, actually. Oh. You had to both figure it out, and if you voted the same, or if you answered the same, you got an extra vote, and if you voted the same, you got an extra vote. The power of friendship. Our friendship. Power of friendship. Saved us. Well, not <laughs> Nicholas, sadly, that night, but we made a move. Yes. That's great. I didn't see that coming either, so that's, yeah. That's why I was like, oh, rocks. What a bad Keith, time. did you know it was going to be you when we returned to banishment that night because you had been written down at first? Hey, okay, I had just got off of a horrible night where a boob I tried to make blew up in my face. <laughs> uh, so I was like, let me take a break from the game. Let me just apologize to everybody. Let me go eat out, watch my Big Brother, big brother live feeds, and chill out. And hopefully it's not me. In the back of my... I, up here, I was like, why would they get rid of you? Like, who are you working with? Like that, in the back of my head, something was going off like, bro, it's you, <laughs> what are you doing? Um, but I feel like I never see these things coming. Like, even on my televised experience, I, uh, like once I saw my name, it was like, wow. So it's like, once I see my name, then it's just like, ha, they got you. Um, but something in the back of my head was going off. But no, I didn't really realize it. I would like to say too, the vote was supposed to be Joey and we told Keith that it was Joey and we told him multiple times that it was Joey, but he kept not trusting us in that vote and kept messaging us like 20 messages. And then we literally switched it to Keith right before that vote. Wait, in, the, in, the, in, the in those extra messages, you yeah. revealed that you had lied more than we had thought yeah. that you had. And so then, it was supposed to be Joey yeah. and then we literally switched it right before that vote. It was literally going to be Wait, Joey. which lies? You just, you, when we told you that we're voting Joey, we were yeah. being honest that time and you just would not believe us and you just kept on, it was literally like pages of messages. And then we said- And it was earlier in the night when you had said that you were gonna vote with us, like you had said the day before when you did not and then you said, okay, no, this time I am. And then you didn't again, you like well, brought I'm that up did it, as you were I trying did. to convince us. So it was literally like seconds before that vote that we switched it to you because you That's didn't- so hilarious. Vote I'm also, so Tommy, sorry. I didn't congrats to you on that, but like, Good job figuring out that uh, the thing, the Big Brother thing. The Devon one. I was like, you yeah. watched the live feeds. You should have already known. <laughs> also, Keith, you did say something. We were talking about, because I also have the live feeds, and you're like, you're watching them right now. So then I went on my computer, and I went on to the live feeds, and it was like the stars, which means it's like the production turned all the cameras off doing the music. And I was like, how long have the stars been on, Keith? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Like, I was like so convinced i like i told erica and tommy i was like the stars are on he's lying to all of us i was like he's gotta go and that night the plan was like it was funny because we're like all right first we'll do keith and then we'll do nicholas and then like that's not what happened it whatsoever went it went reverse somehow like it worked out in our favor in like the slightest of odds especially going to rocks but like afterwards i just remember like sitting on this couch for so long just being like i can't believe my alliance like you know we ended up on top of that situation it was <laughs> luck does play a huge role in this game um Okay, hold on. Sorry, I'm telling no no football discussion in the chat. That's not what we're doing. Actually, wait, for. let me say one more thing. Yes, please go right ahead. Um, just for the record, I watch Big Brother Live feeds flashback. So I rewind to see the conversations. So that part was not a lie. <laughs> um, so Tommy, the other like double banishment, if you will, where the two vote went almost exactly according to your plan, which surprised me because Scott revealed to us producers that you guys did terrible acting in that Zoom. We that did. It was, it was okay. a painful, it was such a painful Zoom. It really was. But the thing is, I, well, I'll let you finish your question. No, Scott, so did you know immediately that they were just lying to you? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I knew days before that they were just going to do something like that. And then as soon as slack open that day tommy was like i have a plan and i was like this doesn't it's it would be a good plan but i don't buy it at all and then the zoom call was like just the saddest faces about voting katie out and then <laughs> yeah it was but I, I think i had already talked to joey about us trying to work something else out um yeah but it was it was funny which Erica doesn't know, but the backup plan was going to be that you, Joanna, and Joey were going to put all six votes on Erica that night. 
or Eric yeah, five, five or six. Yeah, but we we didn't we didn't decide that until the last minute. Joanna was like, "Let me figure it out. I'll make the call." But then at that point, like Scott's like, Emily no. and Joanna hadn't been talking, no. and I knew like I knew I was going home, and I was like, "There's no point in in us trying to throw some things on Erica if you know it's not going to change anything." So. That leads me to Joanna. Joanna, you are a player where genuinely I want to get a hand raised because I feel like the way you played the game, double-edged sword could have been interpreted as crazy mastermind who's figured this all out or she doesn't know what's going on but keeps doing well through the game. How many of you by show of hands thought that Joanna was a mastermind and had figured everything out? Yeah, a few. Not many. Okay, well, I did because in that first social challenge, you were chatting with everyone and then really just in the middle flipped it to Scott and Scott could not get away from that for the rest of the game, which I feel like was a huge move right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was. Yeah, um, so I mean, it's also what I wanted to happen too. So it wasn't- like I believe, I believe, I believe that it is part of what you wanted to happen too. I also believe the reason why Erica didn't get voted out is because it wasn't your idea. Um, and uh, could have no, gotten Joanna, I told you afterward that I regretted not going with it, but it's because you and Joey did not trust each other that it wouldn't have mattered anyway. That is absolutely not true. I yeah, I trust him. You we guys just Joanna was that doing a work Joanna was had a work thing and my issue was that Joanna didn't come to me. You just messaged me at the last second, Erica. And That's I I just, if you if you would have said Joanna is voting Erica too, but all, all I got was the name Erica. So I was yeah. just like, I don't That's know. That's what I meant. It's not like you didn't trust each other, but like oh, yeah. okay. there just, wasn't yeah. communication. So it wasn't clear. And it was right. like a weird position to play telephone at the last minute. It was so last minute, right? This is true. This is true. And also I was holding a secret um, and knew that they were going to vote Scott off but I did not want to, um, to, to, to tell that secret because I'm, I, I do believe in holding that. But at the same time, I was looking to see who would I put the vote on in this banishment because it wasn't going to be Scott if Scott was just like trusting me to um, vote another way. So and who told me that they were Scott? You guys remember who it was? What did you say? Ask it again. Nobody remembers. No, who like told, told you to vote for Scott? It was going to be Scott. I think I think that might have been in that chat with me and Erica, right? Yeah, who I was in our trio. Okay. Okay. So, uh, oh, sorry. Too many secrets. <laughs> Joanna, your Wi-Fi is a little spotty. It seems like maybe you're back. It, it keeps chopping up. Um, something that I did want to talk about before we get into you know a couple more fun things. I'm not going to keep you guys here forever but that Keith brought up, which I'm so glad we're gonna talk about. And Joanna had also, when we spoke on the phone the other day, um, which is the power of representation in these games. Um, and Keith, it was very cool to see that just you and Joanna, you actually put Joanna on your Zoom list. She didn't put you, you guys were ships in the night, ships in the night. Um, and then you wound up connecting after that. Was it, how was that connecting with her once you guys were on the same team? Keith? You're on mute. I can't hear you. No? There you go. There you go. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay. I was, okay. And like Erica and Tommy can vouch for this. I was very sketched by Joanna at first. Uh, Cause I did, I put her down. She had put me back down and I was like, y'all have y'all talked with Joanna. She like, hasn't talked with me before the Daisy chain pick. And they were like, nah, same for us. Um, I was, I, I didn't think she was going to want to work with me, but like get, uh, us getting on the same team. I, I think we really connected and realized like, yo, we are standing for a lot of the same thing, like, uh, and have a lot of the same principles and such. Um, so that was really great being able to connect with her. Um, just because like on my previous experience, like that, I, you, I didn't even have that opportunity 
Um, and like that's what happens on a lot of uh, these shows where they'll cast very few uh, from marginalized communities and then like split them up instantly. So to be able to like have that chance to like work with someone who like gets, who will get some of the things that you'll experience. I was like, of course, I'm gonna take that opportunity because like, will it happen again? Probably not. Um, so it meant a lot to me. And just for us to be on the same agreement and know and trust that I'm never putting your name down, you're never putting my name down. Um, that was very comforting. And that's like a sense of a security that I got from this game that I'm gonna cherish like long after this. Joanna, did you wanna say anything in response? I, I didn't necessarily have to have a Zoom call with you in the beginning to know that I was never going to put your name down. Um, and just because I don't talk to you throughout the day doesn't mean I'm talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was very important to me. It was extremely important to me. Um, I was so happy that I got a chance to work with Keith after the merge. Lots of things. Um, did change at that point in time in my game. I had to adapt to a different situation after the merge, working with new people. And um, with Colleen, I wanted to like be like the dream team, you know, like Colleen, Keith, and myself. But it just didn't work out that way, unfortunately. And um, yeah. So I do want to touch down on that because it did seem like the perception from you, Joanna, was that Colleen didn't want to work with you and Keith because of a bond that you and Keith may have. Now, having spoken to Colleen offline, Colleen, did you want to address that, clear up what you feel like the perception might have been? Um, that was never part of like me not wanting to work like that had nothing to do with why you guys connected. Like I just... Um, I, Nicholas and Micah didn't say a single word to me before the daisy chain. Keith barely did. So I knew I was doomed on this team. I wanted to like throw Scott some love by getting a royal out and then be done. I was tired. I didn't think I'd make it this long in the game. And I was really thrilled to have, have hung in as long as I did. But I was here to have some fun and it was, it started to get exhausting with level two. So it was what it was. And I just, once like the, the communication started getting like way crazier, I was out. <laughs> so Joanna, yeah, please go ahead. No, you ask the question first and then I'll. Well, I want to, I want to better understand why you think that Colleen was maybe not respecting your reason to not vote for Keith, not go against Keith. Okay. Um, glad you asked. Uh, well, I told Colleen straight out because of the represent representation or the lack thereof um, in Quarantine Island of Black people that I just, I refuse to vote him out. But taking a stance with Keith for this is not taking a stand against Colleen. And she didn't seem to understand that. She actually said- I literally, um, in the chat, my response to you was understood, period. Well, actually, I have screenshots of it, and um, we can't it was send it understood, to period. Let me just say this really quickly. I, I don't want to be angry about this, because this is actually a really good conversation that we're having right now. Um, this is actually what, we, what I do every single day. I bring conversations like this to the table. And I think, at the end of the day, I don't- Think, I think it's important to understand, and I'm saying this with love, but um, the conversations that we were having, you were coming from a place of privilege and ultimately maybe we'll never understand the black experience because when I came to you and said, hey, listen, it's not just about me. It's not just about you. It's about all three of us, let's stay in the game for as long as we can, because it's like a strong Royals. And we wanted to be the three of us. And what you said to me was, I don't appreciate what you're saying, but I respect that. I mean, that's what you said. I have it. I said I will never be able to fully understand that because as a white person- Actually, that's I not what you said. Not fully understand. Like, I will never know what it was like to hear the things that you did growing up. Because 
like as much as I try to learn, I went and also one thing that you can't appreciate is the the tiredness of having to take my daughter places that only has stairs. Okay. okay? So I, I want, understand I wanna, you guys are working on that and that's fine. Like I literally rolled over so you could get farther in this game. No, I disagree with that. Um, I because I think, I think I the merge it. never happened. If the merge never happened, I do believe that I would have been voted off, but that's neither here nor there. And that we'll, we'll never really know that. Um, we all have strugglers, struggles, right? Um, we all have struggles with our family. I never share struggles about my children or my family. And I do understand that you have struggles as well. Um, but aside from those struggles that we have with our family, we can't change the color of our skin, right? I just, I, I, I just want to finish this really quickly. All right. And I will, and I will give you the complete floor after this. Um, Someone from this community, and this is such a supportive community, and I really appreciate you guys because someone from this community reached out to me and sent me a video that I did share with Keith. And it was a video of your QI goodbye. And instead of <laughs> amplifying marginalized voices, you quite literally misconstrued the marginalized voice. And you said the reason why I wanted to be with Keith is because there wasn't enough pigment in your skin, which you and I both know is not true. Correct? You told me that you would never vote against Keith because he was black. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, I don't expect you to. I didn't push you further anymore. Literally, my response to you was understood, period. If you want to stand by Keith, okay. Like, I'm, I support that. But it doesn't mean that I'm not standing with you. I mean, I'm half Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, give me a second. I want to, I want to, I do think it's an important conversation. Chris, I see you just give me a second. I, go ahead, Chris, actually, before I, as I. Yeah, um, as someone who didn't go to any banishment and then was thrown into the kind of merge with, all of you in, with new players, Colleen, Keith, and Joanna, I do feel like a lot of the mistakes that I've learned from my game was not understanding how other people communicate online and through Slack. Um, I know I bum rushed Colleen with a lot of information. I know Joanna and I were talking and then it did start turning to gameplay and I did get like, I just couldn't find a rhythm and that might be my own thing. Um, but that is just like what we're all learning through this is that it's so hard to communicate with just like over Slack. And I think we all have just like, we're all so passionate. We have such strong messages. And I know that I misunderstood people. I'm, I'm pretty well aware that I was misunderstood with my intentions. But I think like that's, that's what's so hard to facilitate with the conversations. I was there that day and I know that I threw some of the like the rhythm off because Colleen was very, very protective of Joanna. I, I was kind of, I was like having a, a connection with Colleen. We talked before the Daisy chain and she said that you were very trustworthy. She wanted to play with you. And that was like, that was my experience at least with Colleen. Um, but I Mine also, too. Like, okay. So, Mine too. so I, also I just want to validate, yeah, that like, I know I come off like crazy on text messaging and all of that too. And I feel like I might've been misunderstood and I'm learning from that. I think like some of that might be what is making some of this happen now, but it's still a good conversation. I'm not, yeah. I'm not invalidating yes. everyone. I think it's an important conversation. conversation. It's an important Absolutely. conversation because it's not just about slack and communication. It's literally about a person that went on the internet. Now I run a nonprofit organization. I'm half white and I'm half black. My husband's white, my children are white. Like I can't have people going on the internet saying that the reason why I didn't choose them is because they weren't black enough. Their pigment wasn't dark enough. That's just not true. And she knows that it isn't true. And, and so when that happens, it like crushed me. Like I felt so betrayed. It, it was once again, like what we do, Keith, it's like a fight that we keep fighting and it's every day and it's all the time. And it's the same thing like, well, the whole like all lives matter thing, you know, when we're not saying that black lives matter more, it's just black lives matter too. And when you go online and you say something like that, 
without communicating with me or getting well, the right information. Joanna, I, she was not allowed to communicate with you. I did not allow her to communicate with you because you were still in the game. That's okay, but she communicated with you and you allowed her to say it and then you put it on the internet. I asked Without her, communicating with me. So then really it's on you, Kelsey, because you could have taken the responsibility knowing that she was saying that and then come back to me and said, hey, let's talk about this. Colleen said that you said, you know, and I know you run this nonprofit. So it, I, I felt kind of betrayed by both of you, to be honest, you know, and there's another video that I received from somebody and I'll share that with you after, afterwards though, cause I don't need to. Okay, great. I'm happy to, I'm always happy to improve in this game. We are always looking to improve. I felt that I, when we cast everyone here, we made a very concerted effort for this to be a queer space, a non-racist space, a non-homophobic space, a non-transphobic space, a non-ableism space, to really make sure that we were casting what we felt were good people. I don't feel that we cast anyone who is that. Do I think that we have stuff to learn from each other? Absolutely. Do I think that people have a hard time understanding each other's experiences? Absolutely. I will never be able to understand what Colleen goes through with her daughter. I will never be able to understand what you have gone through in your life. A hundred percent. I do agree with Chris that there is stuff lost in translation in the Slack. And so I posted her QI goodbye, knowing that her intent and having looked at the Slack, that she was like, they don't, they don't want to go against each other. I'm going to respect that. I do think this is an important conversation. Keith, did you have something you wanted to say? Because I do want to move us to our next thing. I don't want to end this. I just want to make sure that we still have time to cover a few last things and we can absolutely continue this conversation in a separate space. Go yes, ahead, I, I want to say that I very wholeheartedly uh, am very thankful for it to even be able to have this discussion because what you don't realize with like other games, other communities, other televised experiences for copyright infringement, um, is that these discussions will never take place. And so then it gets ignored and then like emotions boil over and everything. The fact that this discussion is able to be had is so significant and so important. And I'm very appreciative to have it, like it's uncomfortable. But the biggest thing is that you, we, we have to be uncomfortable in order to get to a comfort space. Um, and so I guess just like a huge takeaway that I want everybody just to think about is just to think about our words because words are so powerful and we can misconstrue something or someone cannot understand what we're saying as well. And so it's important to be like, okay, I'm not understanding, help me understand this. Um, so just um, reemphasizing the importance of words and much appreciation for discussions like these. Yes. Thank you, Keith. Yeah. I agree. Thank you for saying that. Joanna truly would love, I, I'm being so sincere, want to continue this conversation, want to know how we as a show can do better, how I can do better. Absolutely do not want anyone to feel like this is a not safe space for them. That is very important to us. Um, I am going to move us just to our last few topics before we wrap for the night. It's been an hour and a half already. Um, it feels crazy to go into these questions because it's like, you know, uh, we just had a more serious conversation, but um, I'm just going to dive into these last few questions. Um, the first question being, you know, this game really does challenge you. It challenges you emotionally, physically, mentally in so many ways. And this game really does help you realize also, are you made for this? Are you not made for this? So a lot of fans wanted to know just by show of hands, would after having gone through this game, would you apply to play for the televised experience of this game? Just by show of hands. Well, Keith, you can't, I mean, I guess, yeah, you've already done it, but <clears throat> yes. So Katie, I see you not raising your hand and you made it to final four. Is there a reason why you wouldn't continue? Or why you wouldn't apply? Hold on, you're muted. You're muted. Gosh. Okay, my like neck has been red for a week and a half. My like skin is so dry from two weeks of crying. My body is just fully falling apart. I couldn't do this in the woods. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could. <laughs> no, I like physically can't. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much, though. Um, 
Okay, so also people wanted to know by show of hands, how many of you watched TQI before this season? Okay, and they wanted to know how did this differ from your expectations? Shannon, I'll go to you first. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, so <laughs> I will say that I have played one of these before with my friends and family, and I have watched this. And I thought that it was going to be like no problem for me to just separate like game and like personal relationships. And that was not the case for me at all. I <laughs> think I learned that I'm just like not really cut out for the like lying, manipulating thing. And no, like great job to, to everyone that can do that. Like I'm such a survivor fan and I like respect your game so much, but it was so so hard for me <laughs> and I didn't think that it would be I thought I'd be able to just be like yes we're best friends <laughs> and then I just I just couldn't so it was very very different than I thought it was going to be I like really cared about people a lot very fast and yeah I think it was just hard for me to separate it when I thought that I would be able to <laughs> Joey how was it for you having watched before and also you applied last season weren't cast and then were cast this season Yes, anyone who's out there, keep apply, keep trying out there. You can make it the next one. Second time's the charm, or third, or fourth, or whatever you need. I think Jody as well. Jody, did you apply for season two, maybe? Yeah, and you guys said I was too young because I was. So I young didn't say then. that, but thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Joey. I was just gonna say that um, I think it was definitely like going in. You definitely have imposter syndrome. Like that, I watched like seasons two and three, so intently and was very much like a huge fan of all of these people and it's so crazy like now being part of the community and people reaching out to me I'm like I like I admire you all so much and so it's so crazy so I think going into it um and so I mean it was definitely it's totally different being part of it I think you realize that you you think like oh it's like stress but probably just in the evening part and not realizing the stress seeps into your entire day you can't sleep you can't eat I think that was definitely something I wasn't like couldn't understand until I got to do it. Um, so Tommy and Erica, I have a question for you both. You guys actually are friends with Cam and Corey who played last season. Did either of you let people know that you were friends with them or knew or had watched the game? Tommy, I'll go to you first. I did a little bit, but I don't think I elaborated on how good of friends Corey and I were. Um, but it did make this a little more challenging because when I got to watch him play, I got to see other people's points of views and stuff. And so my impression going in would be being able to know everything, but that's what made it so much harder. But I also wanted to do better than him and I did. Erica, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I think I mentioned it pretty early to a lot of people because we would start talking about like, oh, why did you apply to the show? And I'd be like, oh yeah, like I watched my friend Cameron play. Um, but I also wanted to make it a point of making myself distinct from Cameron because we are two very different people and he had a very specific style of playing this game that I absolutely did not want to emulate coming into this game so uh, it was a matter of setting up expectations and um, you know not letting on too much of uh, you know how you were viewing Cameron's game and then taking that and formulating your own. So Erica, I do want to touch down on, you know, this game forces transformations for a lot of people. Yours seemed notable to me in particular. Would you be willing to talk a little bit more? Um, Cause you know, not everyone has gotten to see your confessionals of kind of your transformation that you've had through this season. Yeah, I mean, I think I came in here, I mentioned it in a confessional that I came in to this game with a lot of limits that I had placed on myself, sort of like mental blocks. Um, I'm very bad at public speaking historically. <laughs> I used to be called mute when I was in high, uh, middle school and high school because I just like didn't talk at all. Um, so that and being a very socially anxious person, you know, from day one, it's just like, okay, like, hey, I know you have social anxiety, but you have to go out and meet 17 new people all at once or else you're going to be at the bottom of the pile and you're going to get voted out really fast. Um, so, you know, I think if anything, Cameron has provided me a sense of competitiveness because I was just like, all right, like I need to get in and I need to beat Cameron's spot in this at least. 
Um, but it really makes you see where you had set your own sort of hurdle mentally, and it forces you to go beyond that um, because, you know, at the start of it, you're just like, all right, I know I can't do burpees. I've never done a burpee in my life, but I'm going to force myself to do 20 of them because um, if I don't, then I'm disappointing my teammates and I know uh, they feel really strongly about this. And then it got to a point of, you know, getting into the merge and you're just like, oh, wow, like, you know, I was depending on like other teammates to uh, fill in for the gaps that I didn't personally feel strong in, like physical stuff. Um, but then you're just like, all right, like there's no one else I can depend on. I only have myself to move forward. So, you know, every every step of it, it's inching open that that barrier and that boundary that you've set for yourself in a way that you don't feel until you get to the end and you're doing like 30 burpees at once and uh, you're feeling fine <laughs> the next day. Um, so, you know, uh, <laughs> Are you I'm also not really good speaking. That's yeah. okay. Are you proud of how you've done this season? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally thought I would get voted out, like, at the very beginning. So uh, I mean it very genuinely when I say that I am so surprised I even made it this far. Um, and one other person who I also felt had a major transformation was Katie when we were doing our QI goodbye, you know, Katie didn't want to own all the amazing things she had done, such as finding idols, being the team captain, but going under the radar in comparison to the other team captains. Katie, how are you feeling after your experience? Um, I feel great and thankful that it's done. Um, I had... <laughs> A lot of fun, um, but it was, yeah, just so far out of my comfort zone. I mean, like, not the making friends part. I love that. Um, it's actually a bit of a problem. Uh, I make too many friends. It takes up a lot of time. Um, but I did, yeah, I definitely was like, oh, I just don't want to make it, like, I just don't want to get sent home first. Um, and I kind of like started to like get more into it. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't really, I didn't consider that I could <laughs> go far because I was like, I don't know about strategy. Which is incredible. Uh, it's really incredible to right. see all of you guys be challenged in that way. Um, so last few things, I want to bring on Kat and Emily who, who are gonna talk to us about how much money we raised this season, give us a little update. So Kat and Emily Carberg, please turn your videos on. Hi. Hi, I just spilled water on my laptop, so I'm on Becca's laptop. Great. It's fine, we're doing great. Emily, what's up, friend? Hi, hi. Hi, do you wanna share, I think that we should share how much we raised um, from our charity challenges first. Yes, so we had three weekend charity challenges and we raised $1,815 over those three weekends. Yay! And that was for three different awesome charities we were able to donate to who are doing great work. And then for our TQI um, auction, we were able to raise... Oh, I'm supposed to say that one? Oh, sorry, I can say it. <laughs> they can't say it. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let me go to the right page. I'm sorry. Okay, the total is, oh my gosh, is that real? Is that real, Emily? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh my God, Damn, I'll tell you. Oh, that's so good. Okay. I hope this is right. This is higher than I thought. $2,954.21. <laughs> Insane. So amazing. Thank you all to our community for showing up for the charity challenge. I'm not I know I'll go back to you, Emily and Kat. I just want to say thank you for showing up to those charity challenges and showing up for the auction and raising that money. Go back ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just have one final thing. Um, the fans wanted to thank Kelsey and the producers for this very awesome, amazing season. Also, all of you players, like we all fell in love with you. We're ready to chat. Um, so we have a little something that we prepared for you all. I hope this works. Hey everybody, it's me, Diane Manchego. You might remember me from my early 90s exercise hit, Dancing with Diane. Well, I have something to tell you. 
If you are able to do the dance moves with the corresponding word that I provide for you and send them in a video back to Kelsey, well then guess what? You're gonna get ahead in this game that I call life. Let's go! A one, a two, a six, nine, four, three, a core from my sister, a core from my mister. You got the check, I got the check, you got the check. Okay, take the check and if a boy tells you I don't want to wait, tell him goodbye, then I'll find another date. Not to let the coffee, not to let the coffee. I'll be back in an hour. The girls and I are walking. I look at my kids' Facebook, but I don't think that's stalking. Eat your veggies, say a prayer, and please just go to bed. Oh, me? I can't sleep. Not till after coffee. I have to say that's not correct. <laughs> oh my God, incredible, incredible. Truly moved to tears. I'm saving my speech that I have at the end because we have a few last things to get through. First, I just want to say um, each season grows and each season we need more help. And I really want, if you can turn on your video, if you're here, when I say your name to thank you, we had so many people helping with judging, with graphics, with videos, with emotional support, all of that. Jerry, Britt, Corey, Emily, Kat, Allison, Jake, Cam, Charlotte, Ashley, Aaron, Casey, Cody, Cole, Gray, and Sam. Thank you all so much. We truly could not have done it without you guys. Um, so appreciate you. Um, and without further ado, we are going to go to our fan favorite. We're going to go to our fan favorite. We're almost done. Like 10 more minutes, guys. I promise. Um, and to announce fan favorite, I am going to ask season one fan favorite Becca, season two fan favorite Kat, and season three fan favorite Charlotte to announce who the winner was. Oh, also we raised $487 for the fan favorite. That's separate from everything else. $100 will go to the fan favorite and the rest will go to a charity of the fan favorites choosing. Becca and Charlotte and Kat, take it away. Can you guys hear us and see us? I unplugged the internet by accident. Um, you're frozen, but we can hear you. <laughs> um, okay, well, still frozen? No, nope, you're good. Okay. okay, great. Uh, where where is the whole video? You, where's uh? Make it bigger. Well, I'm trying to see where Charlotte. Yeah, is. we gotta find Charlotte. Hi, I'm here. Oh, oh, okay. Hi, hey Charlotte. Hey Kat. Hey Charlotte. Hey Becca. Hey Kat. Hey Becca. Hey girls. Hey, hey girls. Girl. <laughs> so. When I won fan favorite, there wasn't exactly a framework for what makes a fan favorite because I forged the path, <laughs> if you may. Um, but now that we're four seasons deep, what do you think it takes to be a fan favorite? I mean, thank you for asking. I feel like we can all acknowledge there has to be strong sexual tension, right? I mean, sexual tension between the fan favorites and the contestants, sexual tension between the fan favorite and the fans at home and obviously, you know, most importantly, sexual tension between 
all of the prior fan favorites. Mm. So true. Mm. Oh, they also should be queer. They don't have to be queer. But it's definitely preferred. But <laughs> Okay. From my life experience, you know, I found that the proper connection can overcome any sort of preconceived notion of one's sexual orientation. Charlotte, now is not the time. <laughs> I love it when you get angry with me. Okay, I, I think that a key component is fans feeling like your potential in the game outweighed your actual performance in the game. Mm. Well, that doesn't really apply to you since, or me, since I went home from rock. You did go home by rocks, but you had an extra vote that you could have used and you didn't. Other than going home with three advantages in your pocket, Exactly! Rebecca. My potential didn't live up to my performance. That's exactly what I'm saying. I think we can all agree that most importantly, the fan favorite has to cry a lot. What? Like on the show? Yeah, like, like we all cried a ton, right? Like we, we sent in so many confessionals of us just sort of crying, like just crying all the time. No, um, no, not us. So. Not, not me. really. Only okay, my... yeah. Nope, me neither. Only my exit interview. Um, okay, ooh, let's get to it. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so a fun fact about this season's fan favorite is that they only use Ticonder... Ticon... Number two pencils from that brand. <laughs> a fun fact is that they also do not drink coffee or any other warm beverages. And another fun fact is they have a roommate named Chandler. Charlotte, that is a different Joey. That, that is different. Okay, okay. A fun fact is that when he was younger, he put together a full PowerPoint presentation of research on why he should get a dog and presented it to his family. He compiled a full report on the dog breed, the best and most ethical breeder, and did all the training and even slept outside of the crate for the dog. And they did end up getting a lab named Hunter. And another fun fact is that he is six feet tall. Crazy. And another fun fact is he's currently running for president of the United States of America. That's a different Joey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but wouldn't you vote for him? For president? Yes, yes. Absolutely. I would. I would. And yeah. fan favorite. I absolutely would. Oh, oh, also a fun fact about him is that he is very engaging to watch in the show. Um, He's not only engaging with fans, uh, but he's also engaging with other players. And his thoughtful <laughs> reminders to wear a mask and vote were very cute. And he also loves noodles and company as much as me. And a fun fact about this person was how easy it was for so many contestants to get to know him easily and also root for him because of what a kind-hearted person that he is and how amazing it is to watch his beautiful relationship with his boyfriend who helped us with some of these fun facts. He's also very cute. Yeah. And a fun fact about this person is that his warmth and enthusiasm permeated through the screen throughout his confessionals, his jury questions, and of course, his goodbye speech. It's not a shock that I love a verbose king with a huge heart. Welcome to, to the, the fan, fan favorite, favorite club, Joey! You're hot! <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much, Charlotte! Thank you. Congratulations! Oh. <laughs> Joey, we also have a video that we wanted to share a compilation of your confessionals. Um, so let's get this going. Hi, it's me, Mary. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. You are not going to believe this. The fun fact, the fun fact, fun fact. Where the fun fact of the day is that watermelons are both a fruit and a vegetable. And Ontario, where Katie's from, is actually the home of Hawaiian pizza, not Hawaii. Every building in BC can't be taller than the Washington Monument. That way, you can get a view of it from any point of the city. Albert Einstein's first wife was the only woman in all the physics classes he took. James Buchanan, our 15th president, was the only president who never married. So many rumored that he was gay. Washington Monument is actually made out of two different kinds of marble because he ran out of marble the first third of the way out. Hey girl, today we are outside of the National Archives where the fun fact of the day is that these two large bronze doors behind me are believed to be the largest producers of the blues on the back of the generation. Scott, are you kidding me? Scott, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, no! It's the NFC3! The NFC3! The NFC3! No! What are you doing here? I'm here to find out who's the real DC fan favorite. It's not a contest. I'm the fan favorite. Honestly, clearly I am the fan favorite. Scott isn't even the real fan favorite of DC, let alone the fan favorite the of our season. I'm the of this season, dude. Scott, I know so many more fun facts about DC than you will ever Did know. Did you know there are 3 billion pieces of paper in here? Oh, really? And there are over 60 million 
still photographs. Oh, right next to the 91 million feet of motion picture film. And the 70,000 sound recordings. And do you know how many aerial photographs there are? I bet you don't even know how many aerial photographs there are. I'd say probably 9, nine million. million. Fine, we're gonna call this one a tie. Much love from DC, we love you all. Please wear a mask, please vote, XOXO. <laughs> Oh, we got to see our DC favorites. Thank you to Scott, Joey, and Deanna for making that happen. And thank you to producer Becca Barish for the brilliant idea of forcing those three to get together to film that video. Um, before, I had one last thing I wanted to say, but Elisa slapped me that she wanted to say something before I end this. So please go ahead, Elisa. Hello. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank you all. I was able to watch the confessionals after I left. And every single one of your guys' confessionals made me absolutely cry to the point where I screen recorded it so I could have it forever. I love you all so much. And I'm so thankful that I was able to be a part of this um, game with you guys. I'm excited to be a part of um, the community with you and to be friends with you. Um, I just want to give a special shout out to like, okay, Micah and Katie, I wanted to be best friends with you from literally the beginning. Um, Jody, you're the best. Scott, you're the best. Literally everyone, you're the best. Um, but I have personally three Zoom tokens left, and I would love to use it on all of you. Um, I, I want to get, like, to know you guys better. I wasn't able to, obviously, but I love you all so much, and you guys are the best, and you guys are the sweetest, um, and I can't wait to be friends with you guys after this. So just want to let you guys know that you guys are amazing. Also, the producers, Kelsey, you guys are literally the best. I wanted to be um, on this game since my sister played. So um, to be able to be a part of this, even though it was for a short time, amazing. So just wanted to say that. Um, love you all so much. Um, now, before I end this, I'm letting you know there's no QI reply after this. It's just going to end. But I did. Um, I was inspired by Queen Joanna to write something up and just speak to you all before we ended. Um, and I am going to get emotional, just like bear with me. Um, I know the current state of the world can feel overwhelming, difficult, and very isolating. It feels so special to be a part of this positive, loving, and supportive community that shows up for each other and does our best to make each other not feel alone. I am thankful to all of you for taking part in this community and believing in it. This all would not exist without you. Each season, the show and community have grown. Producers, turn your cameras on. I'm so fortunate to have an incredible producing team of Carter, Maddie, Becca, and Marissa. Carter, your mind for twists and clues truly baffles me, and each season you rise to the occasion, topping yourself from the previous season. I'm going to go ahead and say, controversial, you've been one of the best players I've ever watched in all of these seasons. And truly, how lucky am I that you played my game? You finding the game season one was a great act by the universe, and I will be eternally grateful for it leading you to me. Maddie, this was your first full season as a producer, and no one would have known because you fit so seamlessly with our team. You elevate the game emotionally and are always thinking of how to best support our players. You pretend to be the hard-ass producer, but we all know you're the biggest damn softie around and so, so sweet. Um, and we adore you for it. Becca, I'm so beyond thrilled that this season, our players and communities got exposed to more of your genius comedic mind. You continue to astound me and truly, truly dancing with Diana is a piece of art and I will fight anyone on that. The only thing better than your comedic mind is your big heart and you take care of our contestants so well. And lastly, Marissa. Marissa has iconically never watched Survivor ever in her whole life, which is outrageous. Um, and that will entertain me forever. Marissa is not only a phenomenal producer who executes and oversees in such an impressive manner, but is also a dear friend who allows me to lean on her during the season and call her anytime I need a consult. Marissa is my Oprah and I'm her Gail and I'm so grateful to do this game with one of my best friends. Famously, the producers, we are not compensated. So for these producers to show up and give themselves their time, their ideas, their energy and their thoughtfulness to the game speaks volumes to who they are as people. I could not do this game without them and I will never be able to express my gratitude and appreciation. To work with these brilliant minds who are also so compassionate is a privilege and an honor. Um, I also 
I also want to thank my dad, uh, the original Papa Crobes. I realized last night that this game would not be possible without him. When I began this game, I called him with this wild idea I had, asked him if he'd be willing to play. He had never used Slack. He wasn't on Zoom. He never filmed a confessional. But without question, he showed up, played this game, and has supported me and this community throughout this. He continues to show up at all the auctions, all the challenges. I'm so lucky, and I love you so much. And also, Dad, thank you for cooking me steak tonight. Um, lastly, I just want to say that this game began as a way to entertain my family and friends, but really it was for me to selfishly occupy my free time and anxious brain during this pandemic. I never would have dreamed that six months later, this would be where we're at. And I have so many new friends and I hope that many of you feel the same. Um, to be exposed to all of you, I know we challenge you, but you all challenge us as well and challenge me. And I feel that I grow as a person each season. It's truly incredible. I feel so lucky. Um, this grew into a gorgeous part of the internet that makes me happy to wake up to each day. I'm a better person and have grown so much because of all of you and I really just am so thankful to you all. To quote a few of my season four contestants, remember to listen to each other, be open, be unafraid, wear a mask and go vote. Love you all. Congrats on a season four. Have a good night, everybody. We love you, Kelsey. We love you, Kelsey.